Hi, and welcome back to the Smart Couple Podcast, episode 114, 114. If you're new, this podcast is all about long-term partnership and how to do that well. If you're returning, you know the deal, you know the drill, and you're going to learn something here. I was just with my family in backpacking in Canyonlands National Park in Utah. It was really amazing, by the way. I highly recommend that. And man, we had a really intense first couple of days of the trip because I got triggered and was in some state and took my amazing wife to help me figure out what was going on. And what was cool about it is we got to it and we found our way. And uh, then we had many days in nature uh, together as a family. And nature for me is a place I feel deeply connected to. And so we, as a family, spent a lot of time in nature. And this particular trip was no exception. And what's interesting here is in this episode, we're going to talk, my wife and I are going to talk about connection. What the hell is connection? How do you maintain it? What's the difference between how men connect versus how women connect? Uh, we just explore some of these and we just jam about it. And this is a conversation that Ellen and I have on a regular basis. And we just decided to take a listener's question and kind of riff off it and talk about it. So my time in the Utah desert was deeply connective. Okay. That's the bottom line here is it got me back and my wife got me back and I got me back through all the ways in which I know how to come back when I'm really triggered by something, right? Especially something that I'm kind of oblivious to or unconscious of some new issue or some weird thing that kind of hit me uh, when I wasn't looking. So yeah, massive magic in the desert with my kids and my wife. And I just love that, you know, I can take care of my family deep in the middle of the wilderness and uh, it's totally fine just because I, I have so much um, capacity there and facility given my years of leading wilderness trips. Um, so yeah, we, we just rocked it out and had a killer time. So what works for you to come back? And connection, if you know anything about connection, you understand that in order to connect to another person, you've got to be connected to yourself. So if you feel disconnected from yourself in life, you one of the primary ways you can get reconnected to yourself is through another person. And I learned this after grad school, actually, after studying people for a number of years and myself, I finally figured out the fastest way for me to connect with me was to connect with another person in a very present-centered kind of meditation-style way. And back in the day, when I used to get really triggered and I'd stay shut down and disconnected for weeks, I slowly started shortening that gap because I learned that when I would just sit on the bed with my wife and look into her eyes and hold her hands and breathe together and just look at her and then look away and take my time, I slowly learned how to find my way back in. And she was like the safe resource for me to come back into connection. It was a pretty, pretty cool discovery. And I can go deeper into that, by the way, in uh, courses I teach, but uh, that's it in a nutshell. And so for you, you're going to have to find out what helps you feel connected to yourself. Because if you are depressed, anxious, disconnected, uh, overwhelmed in your life, extremely stressed out, you got to understand that, that your state has a big impact on someone you live with, all right? And uh, it doesn't have to be a problem. In fact, you can learn to use the other person and your connection to be extremely resourceful and powerful for you. So in this conversation, Ellen and I take a question from you, the listener, and we just explore it. What is this thing called connection? How do we sustain it? How do we maintain it? And are you being true to yourself in the ways you connect? Ellen and I recorded this and then we 
hit stop and we were just talking about it afterwards and we stumbled across another really important point. So we actually added a section at the very end. So make sure you listen to the very, very end. And as always, stay tuned for the action step at the end. Okay, here we go. All right, welcome back, Ellen Bader. Thank you, Jason. Yes, how's it going today? It's going well. Cool. Yeah, good to see you in our house, in another room. Mm -hmm. So Ellen, um, we got a question here uh, that someone in the smart couple community wants us to uh, answer. So let let me read it to you. Where is it? Okay, this one's from Mandy. And Mandy's in the smart couple community. And she says she wants to know about connection. And you and I talk about this a lot. Like, what is connection? And I'm going to read her whole question here, kind of a little short paragraph, and then we'll go back and forth on some of the finer points. Cool? Okay. All right. So Mandy says, feeling connected. First of all, can we explore the meaning of that in depth? To me, it's hard to define and hard to ask for and hard to get through to my partner, though my partner really tries. It's a feeling I get that my partner and I are connected. LOL, not helping. We're connected (laughs) when we're both open to one another, present, affectionate, compassionate. Is it too much or unrealistic to want the goal to be in that heart-centered, connected space all the time? Not literally all the time, but you know, like a majority. I could get that feeling from a two minute interaction every day. I think that doesn't seem unrealistic, but please tell me if it is. Seems like a lot for couples. Men get connected through sex and women can feel connected through sex, but prefer to feel connected before being sexually intimate. That's me. Why is that? How to handle when neither is getting what they need, sex or heart connection. How can I go about being down for sex without a heart connection? How could a man move toward being more heart connected without sex. (laughs) And then finally she asks, how do I explain my need to someone who this is all brand new to? (laughs) I love this question. I love her trying to figure out her question as she's asking the question. I I totally understand that. Yeah. So let's, Mm -hmm. let's rewind back up to kind of the first question. Is it unrealistic to want the goal to be in a heart centered place all the time? Like can, can people be connected all the time, a hundred percent of the time? Yeah. It seemed like her first question was like, what is connection? Like, how do you connect? And then she tried to describe the feeling that she's wanting to understand more and how to have more of that. Yeah. I'm I'm not seeing the, um, her first question that I'm reading is, is it too much or too unrealistic to want the goal to be in a heart centered connected space all the time? Oh, okay. So she knows what she's wanting to feel oh, no, more. No. Of. Oh no, <laughs> you're right. Hold on. I'm looking at the very first sentence. First of all, can we explore the meaning of connection in depth? Yes. Okay. That's what I heard. <laughs> Here's an example of uh, a husband and wife not being on the same page, not misinterpreting <laughs> information. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you want to start? Yeah. What is connection? Um, can we explore the meaning of that in depth? Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, for me, we've talked about this a bunch and there's, there's this, um, feeling that we call it the secure home base where our vibe is just good, right? Despite mm-hmm. the challenges that come and go, our vibe in general is respectful. It's, uh, you know, kind, it's caring toward each other. And at the same time, there's deeper and deeper levels of feeling connected that I can experience with you. Right. Right. You're, but you're starting to speak to where my mind went to, which is like what I would say is safety. Like, like we have to start somewhere. If we're going to connect at all, we have to feel cared for, safe, friendly, you know, there can't be any guards up or perceptions of um, threat. I mean, I'm just, I'm all about that stuff right now. So yeah, in other words, we can't, one of us comes home from work or walks in the door. And if there's any part of me, that's not like looking, just looking toward you in a kind way, that means I might not feel safe. There might be something in the way of us, right? Yeah. I I probably would register like, oh, something's wrong or, 
oh, he doesn't seem okay. And then we would be talking about that. But um, yeah, I think that good connection happens in a kind of a little, in a feeling of feeling safe and calm with each other. Yeah, I would agree. And I think that's where, Mandy, you're talking about your heart maybe opens and you can feel uh, more open to sex, for example, when you feel safe, Mm -hmm. relaxed, and open. And that's probably Mm -hmm. for you a feeling of connection. Mm -hmm. And your guy might have a little different, uh, yeah, he might have a different way in in terms of feeling his heart. And I would just, as a man, I I know that landscape personally where it's like uh, having, you know, being able to soften and connect more after sex, right? after ejaculation, for example. But uh, over the years, I've, I guess, grown to appreciate, thanks to you, Ellen, um, the, f- the need almost to, to feel connected first. Mm-hmm. And how do we get there? You know, how does yeah. the more masculine or the man or whoever it is that's maybe more guarded, how do you feel safe enough to um, have a, the kind of connection where sex is just kind of a, an obvious next step? Right. Right. I think you have to learn each other well. What helps us both feel really relaxed and calm and open with each other. That's safety feels a lot like that. And yeah, it's it's not a big jump to be sexual if you have that online. Yeah. And I, I'm just thinking about some of the men out there that might be listening that again, kind of a classic thing you hear for a man is if he's feeling stressed about work, um, he's not going to use the language connection, right? Or disconnected. He's just going to be like, no, I'm stressed. I'm fine. We're fine. Mm -hmm. I'm just stressed. But the problem with that stress is, uh, it's impacting the safety your partner feels and you know, your body is tense and it's kind of wound up. And so for a man, especially if he's habituated himself to relaxing through ejaculation, like a stress relief is just rubbing one out or masturbating. Um, that's how a lot of guys go about stress relief, right? And so he, he's going to start to act that way with his partner. Like, oh, you know, what would feel better is just if we had sex. Mm. Right. And then she, but she's like, but you, I don't feel really comfortable or good with you right now. I, I need to, we need to talk. I need to like, make sure that I can actually, you know, go into that space, be vulnerable with you and be open with you. But yeah. when you're in that, when the guy's in that state of stress, that's like not what a woman wants to do. Is that yeah. More spe- yeah, exactly. And if my, cause if I come home stressed or if I'm just stressed in general, I'm going to have some uh, touch doesn't necessarily feel good. And my little porcupine quills are out. Um, I'm less approachable and yeah, I might soften after sex, but do you really want to move through some porcupine quills to get your guy to relax? Like that's kind of, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. That yeah. Like it goes approach. against instinct. Yeah. <laughs> it goes against instinct. So, but so I think, it seems it, like I, I think couples do this though. They override here. Don't you think? I don't know. I mean, I, that wouldn't work for me. And, and maybe we have more understanding of what's going on there. Like, Hey, I, I'm reacting to something in you and I, I want to know what that is or is it something with us? Can I help you here? I mean, I think we also underestimate how our partners can help us relationally with, with our life stresses and with our struggles, you know? Yeah. Um, so partners want to be utilized, I think, in that way. Um, but we don't often know how. We don't know how to do that, how to include each other in a way that feels supportive and good and helpful. Yeah. Yeah, so back to you, Mandy. I think um, I would recommend that you stay true to what you need um, if you're going to open your body and feel sexual with your guy. And that probably means that, no, I don't want to have sex with you when you're stressed out, honey, just to help you get connected to me. I want to, I want you to find other ways that you can relax and feel open to me besides sex, Mm. you know, and then maybe Mm -hmm. we can talk about sex. Cause if Mm -hmm. I'm, if I'm that guy and you know, again, I want to push men to be into growth and development 
because that's what you've done with me, like just over many years, the, when you're true to yourself, which is most of the time, especially these mm-hmm. days, that forces my hand at facing myself in different ways I need to deal with stress, right? If I grew up for years yeah. dealing with stress one way, r- masturbating, for example, I'm going to need to learn another way so that my partner feels safe and good in our sexual connection. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's interesting that we're talking a lot about stress. The question was about connection and how to feel more connected more often, but maybe, maybe we've gotten here because stress in our relationships, stress in our lives actually is something that does get in the way of us feeling relaxed and open and available to each other. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think I did a um, blog post or maybe a podcast on the 10 signs that I'm disconnected from myself. Mm -hmm. And so it is for me about connection, self-connection. So for example, Ellen, when I don't feel connected with you, chances are I'm not connected to me, right? I've been Mm -hmm. triggered in some way and I'm not totally in myself in a way that feels good to me, right? And so naturally our our connection is going to be a little off. And usually Mm -hmm. stress is the thing that takes me out of Mm self-connection. Stress in my own life about whatever, money, about relationships. Yeah. Yeah, I self-connection, I just want to look at that for a moment, to me would mean being in touch with your inner world, like what you're feeling, what's happening in your body, you know, being in relationship with what's actually going on on a deeper level than just thoughts. And so, yeah, it's like if the more connected you are to yourself, Jason, in a body way and in a heart way and emotional way, the more I can find you, Mm -hmm. you know, or if you let me find you there too, if you're open to that, me helping you like slow down and see, what is happening when you're open to that, we can connect even in a, even when there's stress in our lives. I mean, it's not, it doesn't have to be an obstacle. Um, but I think both people, we both have to be willing to kind of be facilitated a little bit by each other, help each other, be open to kind of being seen Mm -hmm. when we're in a, we're in some struggle in ourselves or in our lives. Yeah, because mo- I think most people or a lot of people will, when they get stressed and they don't feel, they feel kind of crunchy and struggly inside, it, they don't want to be seen. It's like this when we go into hiding a little bit and say, I'm fine because um, yeah. it feels shameful or embarrassing or we've just got a habit to to kind of go inward when we're struggling. And I think mm-hmm. what you're saying is this is an opportunity here to utilize you, utilize my partner to help me in my struggle. Yeah. Yeah, and I as I'm thinking about this question Mandy has about connection. I'm also thinking about this belief I have that we, we actually all want to connect that we're, that's, that's a longing we all have and our partners can help, help us there. They can help find, even if we don't look like we want to, or we seem really like all we need is space or distance. Um, I think that's something either that's that's good to talk about. That's good to be curious about and explore as a couple. Like, is that really, has it really shown to be helpful? Mm -hmm. Um, And sure at times I'm sure it is, but at some point the connection needs to be reestablished for both partners to feel like they value the relationship. Like it's really bringing them something more. So you don't really want to go too long with one, even just one person feeling like, we're, we haven't been connected in way too long, you know, to, and to try and figure out what that is, what's going on and what it is they're wanting to experience to feel more, um, included and valued in the relationship. Yeah. And with the more distant partner, um, someone Stan Tacken would call the Island. Um, mm-hmm. they actually, their covert, one of their covert needs is underground is they actually probably want connection more than you do and need it but they're not, they've, they've trained themselves to act like and make it look like they don't. So when your partner says, no, I don't really need the connection. We're, we're already connected. We're fine. Um, I wouldn't buy that. I'd be like, well, I don't feel like we're connected. It doesn't feel very good here because deep down he or she, I'm saying he, in this example, your guy, um, probably does really need 
uh, a feeling of belonging and connection with you. Otherwise he wouldn't mm -hmm. be with you. Mm -hmm. Right. Wouldn't be in a relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's also this notion of the, I talk about the four pillars of having a really great partnership over time. And one of them is this secure home base that I call the fuel. And imagine Mandy, you and your guy traveling around this planet together, um, on foot or something, and you're going to go through a lot of challenges, your connection, the quality of your connection is going to make or break that journey. If you guys can't figure out how to maintain a strong, like I have your back, you have my back, and this in general feels good and respectful and mutual, it's going to be a really hard journey. You're, the journey's already hard enough and you're going to make it harder. So it's worth it to not drop this one, to to stay curious and keep, yeah, keep working on that as a couple. How can we both feel good about what we have? Yeah. And I think, Mandy, your question's coming from some intuition you have about, hey, I want to feel more connected. This matters to me. This is important to me. That's just my sense of you. Um, and I would say keep, keep advocating for that. Hi, quick interruption. As you know, the Relationship School is enrolling soon. We're taking pre-applications and folks are signing up for the nine-month class that they never got in school. All right, this is like the college course on steroids on intimate relationships. All right, here is a comment from one of our recent students who is also training to be a relationship coach. Hi, I'm Daxa and I'm 46 years old and I've been married for 13 years, together for 16. Um, we have two children and I'm in an intercultural marriage, married to an American. I'm German and my marriage was really struggling and I was trying very hard on my own uh, to make it better, to make it come alive again. Um, and I started to feel like a failure in marriage. And then I found Jason Gaddis and his podcast and his work, and I began getting results. And that's why I signed up for the deeper journey. And I haven't looked back through the deeper course. I don't feel like a failure anymore. I feel I, I'm practicing the tools and I know what it takes to be true to myself and be in relationship. And my vision has sort of changed from a uh, bitter tunnel vision to um, a wider perspective full of possibility most of the time. And when it goes back to tunnel vision, I now know what I can do. And through practice also I have gotten the patience and the endurance to wait until my view vi widens again. So I'm really grateful that I signed up for this uh, deep journey. And it's given me more than I can describe in a short note here. All right. Daxa experienced a lot of, a lot of transformation and it's still happening for her. So if you want the same, go to jasongaddis.com slash relationship school to find out more. You know, your last question, Mandy, is how do I explain my need for connection? I think to someone who this is all brand new to. So Ellen, do you have any thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Well, I always think it's nice to show someone because our ideas and words are, can be such a maze in a way mm -hmm. um, and kind of lead us in the wrong directions. So I think if there's a way, if you have a moment with your partner or are having an experience of feeling really connected, you can really slow down and highlight that and talk about that as it's there. Like, wow, this feels so good. And when we're in this space or when you do this or when you ask me that or whenever there's the thing you want and that has you feel really cared about or really connected with, I think the more you can just both know what that feels like and have a sense and just be curious about, yeah, what is it that has us do that? Because sometimes our ideas aren't actually as good as what our experience shows us. Our experience will show us other things. So the more you can show someone or notice when it's happening or notice when someone does something that really breaks it, that, that you know, ruptures something good, which we all do. It's not, it's mm -hmm. not a bad thing that someone does that. Um, that will help you learn about each other a lot so that you can keep finding your way back. Cause there is this process that's natural about 
being in connection and then kind of something happens um, and we lose it and then we find our way back to each other. And so I think learning that those roads, those roads back in really quickly and as simple as possible. Sometimes it can be a phrase, it can be a, you know, shifting your state so that you're calm and more relaxed. Um, little things we do throughout the day it can be a lot of things that just help cultivate that sense of connection that that's really resourcing. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um, particularly the part about the nonverbal, uh, maybe it doesn't have to be this big talking process about it, yeah. but maybe highlighting, well, remember that time, honey, when we did X, Y, and Z and we, it, and it felt like the synergy was just on. Remember that? And he might say, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I want more of that. Mm-hmm. You know, you could refer to a memory too. And I want to make a distinction there uh, about it's not necessarily connection and feeling connected. A lot of people, don't you think, Ellen, make the mistake of thinking um, those first few months when the dopamine is surging of a new relationship, that that's connection. And they keep trying to get back to the warm fuzzies of the initial stage of the relationship. I'm, I'm just wondering out loud here, mm. you know. Well, it's, I wouldn't say that that period isn't it isn't not connection. I mean, it is a form of being Absolutely. connected, yeah. but it's not a sustainable biochemical ex- state. So obviously our states change and, and we have to be more um, sort of complex or sophisticated about how we find each other and connect with each other. It kind of forces us to be more skillful, more intentional, more present, uh, and that's really, I think, that's really, in a way, all it takes. It's like the more present we can be, if we can really be curious and open and interested about someone, mm-hmm. we can find them. We can find that um, that spark again. So I don't know. If, if we're trying to go back to a certain state and trying to maintain a state that, yeah, that doesn't, it's going to, fluc- we're going to fluctuate. We're going to not be able to maintain that. So that will be disappointing if that's the, if that's what someone's trying to do. Yeah. If, if I had a great, um, drug experience, um, and I try to keep getting back to that, I'm going to need more drugs to get back to that experience. And it's, so it's not, that's not what we're talking about here with connection. Although Ellen's saying that is connection, of course. Uh, but especially after many years, um, the drugs, those kind of drugs wear off and you're looking for a different kind of connection where you feel like a team, and well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think over time, you know, what we, you know, the way Stan Tatkin would talk about this is that we, what happens in the long term is we start to automate each other and we lose interest. We think we know someone and we're not really watching and paying attention anymore. And we've sort of come to like unconsciously anticipate and um, react to all kinds of little signals or lack of signals. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and we sort of, um, that's one of the, that's pretty deadening to a relationship. So again, that's why I, I would say, you know, start with just really trying to wake up and notice each other and, and notice ourselves. Like, what am I doing? What am I conveying to you when I don't look at you when you walk through the room <laughs> or yeah. when, you know, I don't kiss you and say good night and look in your eyes for a moment. What am I conveying when I have made you just part of the furniture in a way? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So can you become a champion, both of you for the connection? And I, I just, if he's a guy, one thing you can say back to that question, uh, in guy language is most guys understand the metaphor or analogy of sports. And if you watch any good sports team or duo or whatever, they have a strong connection. Um, and whatever his pick a sport, whatever it is, or music is another one. Uh, if you've ever watched live music and when two people jam together or a band that they're fucking connected, right? They can't perform in that way, uh, without being tuned in to each other and really listening. Well, and what's cool about both those examples is they're not talking. Exactly. They're reading each other each other's faces, bodies, um, mm-hmm. they ha- they, yeah. yeah, they're paying really close attention to each other and, and they're hopefully communicating exactly what they mean to communicate 
through their body language and through their face. So everybody's very um, intentional about what they're conveying because it's, it's live, it's in the moment, and the, ne- the next step um, is hinging on the step that's happening right now. So, um, again, it speaks to the – this doesn't have to be explained and talked through as much as it can be shown and noticed and conveyed through, through um, ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't get to jam uh, when – the instrument feels clunky at first. You, you have to actually learn how to play the instrument and play with the other instrument, which is your partner. And eventually you can jam. Um, so uh, that's why I'm like, be a champion for connection. And um, I think it's totally doable if both of you are willing. Yeah. Okay, so just a bonus little section here. Ellen and I were talking after and we just had to add this in. Um, It seems to me, I was telling Ellen, like we were talking about guys and some men um, and me in my former life, uh, men, some men will self-regulate through masturbation and then they come to their partner and it's, and because they want uh, stress reduction and sex might sound good and feel good uh, and then they can get connection. That's another form of self-regulation because it's all about him. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's not a co-regulation that we've talked about here. Right. Right. And I was just saying like, wow, um, like a common issue is that um, the the female in a partnership isn't feeling as sexually interested after a period of time or something. And and I'm, I'm, I was wondering with you, I was like, maybe she's picking up on that this isn't, sex doesn't feel mutual, doesn't feel like it's about her just as much as it's about him, even though I, I think he would like for it to be. I think the guy would, would wants mm-hmm. it to be mutual and obviously consensual and, and a good experience for her, but it's almost like that's not what they're doing. And so they're both, she's, she's not okay with this sort of, she's feeling not safe maybe and not relaxed and is hype getting hypervigilant around the sexuality part because it's not mutual. It doesn't feel co-regulatory and, and we don't really have words for this. It's like we get stuck in our ideas, like, but we, but really there's something going on in the nervous system of both people that I think if, if both people could be communicating, um, helping each other relax first mm-hmm. and feel really safe and good with each other and, and then feel, feel capable of being communicative during sex about sex, like, it, if both people really want it to be a mutual experience, I, I'm guessing that wouldn't, wouldn't be too far of a jump. We just have to sort of look at it from a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, good communication. And can we both uh, have a co-regulatory, really beautiful experience here where we both actually enjoy it? And uh, I think couples can fall into habits where it's like, well, she might be like, okay, if you want scheduled sex, um, fine. And he wants scheduled sex because it's stress relief or something. And she wants it because she doesn't want to upset him because she doesn't want to lose relationship. You know, it's just like, that's not yeah. going to be very sexy guys. And it's not going to feel good to either one of you in the long run. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think we were just trying to think of how to encourage people to, to really be interested in each other enough so that you can talk about and start thinking of this with your partner. Like, how can I make this a really good experience for them and have them feel just open to it versus any other way that this is going down? Yeah. I mean, go back and listen to the episode with Bonnie Badnock on how to feel safe in your relationship. Cause that's the key to me to the, then open and up our bodies and be creative and jam together um, is both of you feeling safe and like yeah. the other person is caring for you. Yeah, I've been, I'm just thinking of all this stuff I've been listening to from Stephen Porges lately, this idea that we can be really activated and mobilized in our bodies um, as long as there's like a context of safety. Uh, Play is like that. Mm -hmm. Like it can be very active and can be um, almost aggressive, aggressive and it doesn't have to the there's no threat in the system because there's so much there's good eye contact communication throughout 
and a lot of signaling that, you know, we're safe together. So there's just a huge um, part of us that really needs to be vulnerable and to be intimate. We really need to know that we can let our guards down without any worry that we would be hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a practice to get to as couples because we're projecting Mm -hmm. and triggering each other a lot. So, you know, it's just a practice. Um, just consider yourself two musicians learning instruments and it takes time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. Cool. Well, it's fun to jam about this, Ellen. It's cool to to go back and forth about connection because it's obviously the center of our world. Yeah. These are great questions and it's fun to think about them and speak about them. Cool. Thanks Mandy for your question. Thanks Ellen for joining me today. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. What'd you think? Connection. Hopefully it got your wheels turning about how you connect because that's your action step is to have a conversation with your partner. Or if you're single, have a conversation with a very, very close friend and talk about how you connect, what works for you and see if you can do some journal exercise around this notion of feeling connected all the time versus uh, no, we connect and we disconnect. We're we're close and we're separate. Yet I feel this baseline of connectedness with this person that I care about. See if you can tease that apart. Because remember, Ellen and I can go through periods of separateness, closeness, separateness, closeness, and yet if we're cool, I can feel connected to her on like a deeper base level right? I can be gone for several days out of town and still feel connected connection with her and barely talk to her, right? There's a difference between that and this everyday kind of desperation of connection, I feel. So pay close attention, all right? And then have a open conversation with this person. If it's your partner, just go there. Be like, hey, I've noticed that you want to connect with me through sex, And that's not how I connect. I don't feel safe, actually. And I've been betraying myself for years. Or, huh, I realize that you connect through sex and I don't. And I've been inhibiting you from connecting with me because I won't give it up for you. Uh, Find your way there. Wrestle with this one. And guys, if you're using sex as the only way to feel connected to your woman, your wife, girlfriend... I challenge you to connect in other ways, all right? Don't settle for the bullshit, hey, this is just my biology, I'm a guy. I only connect to my heart through sex. That is partially true. You, That's a good way for you. Uh, and again, it's limited, okay? It's more the animal way, it's fine. Um, but if you want a woman to relax and open to you more, you're gonna want to, Uh, connect to her emotionally first, all right? Yeah, and I'm sure the women would say, if Ellen was still here, she might say something else for the women, but that's my message to the bros. Okay. And remember, Relationship School, coming up, I really want you there and to come out to Boulder and get this class you never got in school because it's gonna be big and deep and far-reaching in your life because your relationships And the quality of the connections you have will dictate your life satisfaction. Guaranteed. All right? Okay, friends. We'll talk very soon.